as Keir Starmer read out his speech, the citizens of Lebanon and Gaza were once again wondering whether their lives might be taken by Israeli attacks on civilian areas using, in part, British-made weapons that we are still sending over there. Listening to Starmer's speech, one of the young delegates very much had his mind on those innocent civilians. Every child, every person deserves to be respected for the contribution they make. My sister, my sister was a care. I think this guy's obviously got a pass from the 2019 conference. <laughs> we changed the party. Don't you know the Labour Party has changed? They don't think genocide is bad anymore. Carla Denyer really was right when she said that Keir Starmer has just changed them into the Conservatives. It's the kind of like same crap that I would expect from the Conservatives. And not like, I'm not talking like the, the Boris Johnsonite Conservatives necessarily. I'm just kind of talking about the Cameronite Conservatives. It's that callous indifference, that institutional indifference. And as well as this, uh, our very own Callum here at Turn Left Media went down to ask some protesters who were outside the conference for their thoughts on Starmer's first few months. And we got some interesting responses. I'm here to let Labour know that we don't support the cuts to pensioners. We don't support sending 600 million to Ukraine that has nothing to do with us. It's just a quick money maker which they could make that money by taxing the rich. Everybody knows it, everybody's saying it. Tax the rich and you fix the 25 billion black hole. Over two million people are displaced, their homes completely bombed. And we know this didn't start on the 7th of October. It's been going on for 76 years. Um, Palestinians have been getting slaughtered, not to the scale of this genocide. You know, the, the land has been getting stolen. Um, they've not that there's been a blockade, water, electricity, things not getting through. And the wall, the, the, every step of the way for humanity, they will be getting affected, you know, before they were even getting killed. We charge you with genocide! Rachel Reeves, you can't hide! We charge you with genocide! They've got to stop um, repeating things like, um, well, we've, uh, Israel has a right to defend itself, as though Palestine has got no right to defend itself. Um, and they've got to follow international law. They're pretending to, but they're not. Israel has been breaking international law for decades. And because of the silence of countries like the UK and the US, they've grown into this monster who's being allowed to, to uh, murder at will. My view is now almost, are they Tory light, to be quite honest? Uh, I'm a Labour Party member, but I, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm thinking of, of, of leaving the party. Now, the Conservative government killed 230,000 badgers, and Labour in this manifesto said, well, the badger call is ineffective, so we thought they'd stop. But did they? No, they've carried on with all the Conservatives' contracts to slaughter and shoot badgers at night. It's happening now. So I'm here to protest against that, because it is utterly wrong, unscientific, there is no evidence that badgers spread TB to cattle, which is why they're killing them. The badger thing really took me by surprise the first time I watched that video. I um, wasn't after... expecting that to come up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't think anyone was expecting that to come up at first. Um, not the first time I watched it just now. Um, <laughs> excuse me. After the protester who interrupted uh, Starmer's speech... Uh, so, sorry, excuse me. After the, I shouldn't call him a protester, really, because he was a delegate. After the delegate who interrupted Starmer's speech was hauled into a police van, the media were waiting outside to interview him as he emerged sometime later on. What did you want to say to the Prime Minister? Um, I just, I, I hadn't planned on saying anything. It's just when I heard him speak about how he wanted to cease fire in Gaza and Lebanon, just the hypocrisy on how every day we're still sending British bombs and British bullets that are being used in Lebanon and in Gaza right now. And the Prime Minister, he could stop that. He could stop that right now, but he doesn't. And he just, he says that he wants things to stop, but he won't lift a finger to actually stop them. So you weren't planning on saying anything? You were just moved to say why no, you were speaking? No, no. I, I was a delegate. I'm, I'm a Labour Party member. Um, I, I hoped I'd be one for life, but I, I suspect not now. Um, but just w what's happened and just the complete failure of the Labour Party and Keir Starmer to address it, it's, it's just completely sickening. What more specifically do you want from them? 
have complete suspension of arms sales to Israel, um, embargoes, sanctions, whatever it takes to stop this genocide that is currently occurring, not just empty blast tubes to uh, conference halls full of people who support you. Can I ask what your, what your job is already? Are you a student? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a student. You're a student. Are you happy with Keir Starmer as Labour leader? Absolutely not, no. Although it's 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 not just him, it's it's the party more general and the, the wider political establishment um, for not being supportive um, of taking the action that is required in order to stop the genocide and actually stop the war like they claim they want to do. Can you tell us what was going through your head as you were sat there and what sort of, was the moment you decided to stand up and start talking? I was I was just angry. Um, I mean myself I guess for not saying anything at the time. Um, but again, like I say, just for him coming out to say that he wants a, he wants a ceasefire, but not taking any of the actions that he could, not lifting a finger in order to do it. Um, um, and I was just angry. And in the end, I, I decided not to do it. I thought the speech was over. How many? Sorry, go on. Did you, what did you, uh, I don't know if you heard what Keir Starmer said back at you. No, no. Uh, he said you must have a pass from 2019 and they've changed the Labour Party. Well, what do you make of No, I, I, I joined. Um, in 2022, when he was leader, I was, I thought it would, he would be, he would be able to do what he said to, to be a more moderate force that could win, win the election and, and still deliver change. But he, he hasn't delivered change. We've got the same. I thought that was really interesting. That last part, um, where he reveals that he actually joined under Keir Starmer in 2022. He wasn't a Labour member before then. Um, and I've got something a little in common with that. Uh, you know, that, that delegate, as someone who gave Keir Starmer a chance, I actually voted for him in 2020. And it was the worst mistake I ever made in politics. I really regret it. And I, I apologize constantly to my friends who at the time were I like... I find myself doing the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Funnily enough, I was going to bring that up, Harry. I believe you were also very much open to working with him at the start, right? The, the, the three of us are all kind of disgusted by Starmer's actions in Gaza, of course. Um, but or lack of action in, on the Gaza issue, but this isn't like an inevitability, or it's because we just want the politics of protest. It's our response to things he said and done. You know, what I mean, it's 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 our response to, yeah. to I, being awful. I I, I think I because I I've thought about obviously over the last sort of four years having voted for him when I I became a member of the Labour Party in twenty twenty. Um, so around the time that this contest was going on. I think part of me, maybe at that point, one was joining the party specifically to vote for Keir Starmer, which I find really insane now that me at the age of, I'd have been 19 at the time, would, would do that. Um, but ultimately, I think when, um, with, with that chap that just spoke, he talks about the idea that he joined it because he saw the Labour Party as being a moderate force for good. Um, ultimately, I don't know if that's really going to happen. I think the comments, I think everyone kind of focused on the whole sausages gaff, and I understand why, because it was funny, but that part of Starmer's speech in particular, the comment that he made, um, I, it absolutely disgusted me. Because, you know, like somehow thinking that children don't deserve to lose their lives at the hands of a regime that is committing all manner of war crimes is somehow something to be sneered at. And that that's somehow a Labour Party position of the past, which I think is more telling of Labour in its current iteration than it has been um, maybe, maybe back in 2019. Um, I also think, again, it's another needless dig at Jeremy Corbyn. Clearly, Jeremy Corbyn is living in Keir Starmer's head rent-free. There's a reason that Labour threw so much money at the Islington North uh, uh, constituency during the election because they wanted to humiliate Corbyn. Ultimately, Corbyn uh, pulled through and was re-elected. Um, so again, I think it's just like, he just can't let it go. Another thing that really disgusted me about that was the fact that the audience applauded and they cheer. You, you're cheer. What, what, what are you cheering for? I, I know he's your leader, but you don't need to do that. I'm not, I haven't been a member of the Labour Party, for, I think now maybe four months, maybe a little bit less time than that. Mm. I see stuff like that. And I think I don't regret leaving. There was part of me was thinking, should I go to, I, I didn't go to conference last year because I didn't book it in time. And there was part of me this year thinking, you know what, maybe maybe I should go up because I know some people there. And then I thought, actually, you know what, I don't want to give these people any more of my money because what what what, what am I doing it for? And it's just it's deeply. I'm gonna I'm gonna call it weird because that's like the politest thing that I can say. Like it is deeply weird behaviour, cheering that sort of thing. Um, and again, Labour keeps saying Rachel Reeves in particular as well talks about this idea of like we're no longer a party of protest. 
do you understand the history of the Labour Party and why it was formed? It was formed by trade unions coming together to give workers an elected voice in Parliament and fight for rights. The rights that people have won in this country came through protest. Therefore, if Labour is seen as a party of protest, that is a good thing. Um, but ultimately, it's not really anymore, is it? I mean, the amount of donors that we've seen and uh, the amount of vested interests within the Labour Party in, in recent years uh, is evidence of that. When you look at uh, corporations like the Premier League, for example, uh, people like uh, Lord Wahid Ali, the amount that he's donated to the Labour Party, the things that they've been donating as well. Um, the fact that so many uh, multimillionaires and other incredibly wealthy people felt more than happy to throw their support behind Labour kind of shows you that the party really has changed and ultimately isn't going to deliver the things that the Labour Party was founded on. Yeah, I um, I, I do think, uh, I think quite when I saw him being dragged out, I did think of um, David Lammy saying that, um, that unfortunately due to like potential violations of international law, they were just going to have to stop sending uh, certain arms to Israel. And it's just like the the difference in the way that these things are framed, the way that people are treated, the way that... Um... Well, it's hard to use words like unfortunately. Like, why is it unfortunate that you're no longer arming a regime that's massacring children? Yes, you know, and men, either it is or it isn't, you know? Really, it's like, there's nothing unfortunate about it. And I know they suspended some arms sales, but I think the way they did it, again, it's another fence-sitting exercise. You sus they suspended what 10 10 20 percent of the yeah, around, uh, i don't think it's even that high yeah so it's they ridiculous. they suspend that and ultimately the people who think that we should fully suspend arms sales to israel like myself are going to go well that's not enough and then the people who think that we should retain arms sales are going to go well hang on why, why have you started doing it and it's it's going to put in more of a rod in rod in his back you, you know piss or get off the pot really um which i don't know if that's like the but you know that that is um that is ultimately what Labour needs to do. Um, and again, it, when it was revealed that David Cameron was basically sitting on legal advice that said we should not be sending weapons to Israel. Um, I hope to see him someday in the dock at uh, Den Haag, but um, I don't hold my breath. Patreon.com turn left media, support independent media, support social justice that's there on social media. Thank you. Turn left.